uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm very good evening to Mr. Imran Ben Zohir, which is um, someone who has been working in New Zealand for quite some time now. And we will be interviewing him uh, regarding the work ethics in New Zealand for our interview session this time. So uh, without further ado, we'll uh, allow Mr. Imran to um, introduce himself um, on a few stuff, maybe on uh, where is he working, um, what company is he working in New Zealand and um, how long he has been working there. All right. Uh, Bismillah. Assalamualaikum. My name is Imran, Imran bin Zohi. And I have been working in New Zealand for almost one year and i'm working at a company called comac comac group limited it is a hardware store uh, and we distribute all our products throughout new zealand and my position in the company is as a technical writer so i my job is to uh, write all the marketing contents like the blogs and um, what else blogs and also all the marketing stuff and I also uh, pick up calls for orders and I also write the um, SOPs standard operating procedures and yeah that's about it oh, so do you have do you like um, handle the marketing area of the company? Is it, is it it? Yes, yes, I do. So there's uh, there's two people doing that, and I'm I'm working with another person. So he's like my boss, but I'm working with him for the marketing department. All right, thank you. Next question. Uh, okay, Mister Imran. Uh, my next question is: um, Is there any specific culture in your workplace? I mean, in New Zealand, that you can share with us. All right. So, to answer that question, <clears throat> what can I say about the culture in New Zealand is that it's um, they focus on your personal development. So what what happened is um, like uh, per se in my in my company itself. Um, my boss. Um, I mean, my managers, they focus on the staff well-being and also personal de uh, development. So like myself, uh, they've already tried to encourage me to take like a health and safety course. Oh. And also I, I also took, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention before I um, become the te technical writer, I was working in the warehouse as a store person and then I was promoted to a technical writer. And when I was working in the warehouse, uh, I also got to take a license, a forklift license, all those stuff. So they, they encourage us to, you know, de uh, develop your skills, your personal skills. And also like, um, let's say, uh, as in the culture for compensation staff comp uh, compensation so what they do is they always they always appreciate the staff they always uh, take care of the staff so like uh, we have uh, every week we have like a game and in this game uh, it's like uh, it's actually an improvement meeting so in this meeting everyone has to give an Im improvement for the company and then it's just it's just like a simple thing and then um uh, they'll just pick one one of the um, suggestions and you'll get uh, uh, prizes. And also during uh, Christmas, all the staff get prizes, gifts, so that kind of things. And also, one more thing, we get paid for every minute work. So let's say if I clock in eight o'clock, so that means I get paid starting from eight o'clock. If I clock out at five o'clock, I get paid until five. So there's there's no such thing as um, you know, you don't get paid if you uh, work longer, more hours. But yeah, so they pay like the moment you step in for work, the moment you clock in, you get paid. 
And also, the last thing I would like to say is that um, we have uh, work-life balance. So, yeah, we have work-life balance. So it's easy to, I mean, you you can you can manage between your personal life and also work life. It's not it's not that you have to go to work and you know more than forty hours a, a week. It's all at work. Yes. No, not like that. So it's all balance. Right. So it's, it's, yep. it's a very good culture, I think. I just have one question to ask regarding the working hours. So since you said like there's no, you get paid for every minute. So is there like a limit for you to work? Maybe if you feel like working even more extra hours, are you allowed to do that? Maybe you want to work until seven or maybe until six. Yeah. So that is that is um, that is just um, based on. I mean, you need to have a mutual agreement with the uh, boss, of course. You can't simply just work. I mean, if you if you're working for something that you can do it the next day, so I don't I don't see why why you need to stay like on the day itself. So. Yeah, okay. and also if you can finish the work like the next day, so I don't see why why you need to stay longer than you need to. Okay. But but yeah, some sometimes in some cases when we have to do something urgently, then yeah, we have to stay back and yeah, you get paid for it. So no, no problem. No problem. Sorry, very good to know. Okay, right. So I'm uh, proceeding to the next question. Um, do you get along with the workers and your colleagues in New Zealand? Because you know, with the different um, race and different religion, you know, we tend to um, have maybe I don't know simple arguments or something. So do you get along with your colleagues and your workmates? Right. So um, getting to that point, I am the only. Um, migrant in my company so the rest of them are all uh, residents i mean citizens they're all kiwis so i'm the only one who are not kiwi so i would say uh, new zealand is a very diverse country a very very diverse country so i would say uh, all citizens here they already know like this is what they have to face they they know they they have to understand other people's culture so like myself um i would say we get we get we get along pretty well there's not too many problems or anything yet yeah, of course there is like a cultural di- uh, cultural difference like because you know i'm malaysian and they're new zealander but um in terms of working there seem to be no problem other than sometimes they they don't understand when i speak because of the accent, maybe, and sometimes I don't understand when they speak. The accents very different. Uh, New Zealand English is different from British English and American English, very different. But um, overall, I'll say we get we get along pretty well. There's not too much problem. Do you find it hard to communicate with the different accent and all that? Is, is that is that like yeah. a big um, barrier between language? That is that is a little bit of a barrier because. Um, when you don't understand, it's hard to communicate. Even though it's English, I mean, we speak the same language but with the different accent and also like uh, different cultural terms, mm-hmm. terms that only they understand and I don't, and maybe terms that only I understand and they don't. Uh, so that that is when the problem arises. But other than that, everyone is very welcoming. You're very very kind, very good. No, no, um, not even the slightest sense of racism. So that's very good. They treat me equally. Just like they would treat other, I mean, their friends. So I would say... Other New Zealanders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so Mr. Imran, since you mentioned about the Kiwis, I have a question about the Kiwis. So the New Zealanders often call themselves as Kiwis. So as an immigrant, do your colleagues ever ever consider you as a Kiwis after all after all the years being in New Zealand? Right. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I've been in New Zealand for almost three years now. And to answer that question, I would say no. I'm not considered as Kiwi. You will only be considered as a Kiwi if you're a resident. Or a citizen. So that means someone who's originally like who was born in New Zealand. Is that it? 
Right. No. So so it goes like this: If you are born in uh, in New Zealand, then you are a New Zealander. And you're also a Kiwi, but the term Kiwi, it's uh, mostly refer uh, referring to migrants who come here and they get their residency and they become residents of New Zealand, so they are referred as Kiwis most of the time. But those who are born in New Zealand, we also call them Kiwis. But yeah, if you get what I mean. So yes, for myself, I am not a resident. I am still under a temporary work visa. So I'm still considered as a migrant, and yeah, I don't think anyone will call me a Kiwi. I wouldn't call myself a Kiwi unless, not until I get a residency here. Mm-hmm. Only then I'll be a Kiwi. Alright. Okay. Um, can we proceed to the next question? Yep. Okay. Alright. So the next question would be, um, between um our country Malaysia and New Zealand, how would you compare the working environment like? The difference between the working environment in our country, uh, Malaysia, and also New Zealand. Right. So uh, this one relates a lot to the, um, I don't know, second question maybe about the culture. So working environment in New Zealand is definitely so much more different than in Malaysia. Uh, I've worked in Malaysia before, mm-hmm. and also like in the same almost almost the same environment in an office. Um, so. One of the things that are different is that um, over here, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, they they really really want you to um, develop your own personal skills. So they always provide training. Like in my my own company, we have uh, a training meet, meeting every morning, uh, just uh, ten minutes, uh, five around around ten minutes to ten o'clock in the morning. So we have a uh, ten minute um, improve. Uh, sorry training meeting for all the stuff so there's like so let's say for for monday we have sales training for tuesday we have uh, product training oh, and so on. every day yeah it's different every day so that that's what they like they like you to learn and also like there are some days i think on thursday we have like um um uh, it's more to uh, personal development training. So it's like they always tell, like for example, I'll just I'll just uh, say the example. So they they teach us about um how uh, about stock market. Oh. You know this is this is more this is nothing related to uh, the job or anything. It's oh, just yeah. for yourself. It's, it's like just for your personal self. For yeah, your just for yourself. Oh, that's, that's yeah, so things like that. They want they want to teach you like okay, if you make uh, let's say if you make like an investment here, how do you do it? And if you make a loan here, how do you need to pay back? How long? All of stuff. So, yeah. Um, what else can I say? Um, yeah, it's, I think it's basically just just what I said in the early question. It's yeah. more more in the the culture is definitely different because they respect each other. Mm-hmm. We always we always say. Oh, sorry. I just remember. Um, so we have um, in my company we have uh, what we call as entry buttons. So this entry buttons is what uh, the company would like all their staff to um, follow. Mm-hmm. So for example, it's like um, be positive, uh, respect other people, embrace change. Uh, there's like five more, and I don't remember, but yeah, things like that. So we 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 uh, have, all the staff has to follow the entry buttons mm-hmm. while you're at work so there's no cursing you know not even on your lunch time there's no no cursing it's like very very formal yeah. but also very relaxed at the same time okay. right. um mr yeah. Imran, i just want to add some question uh, yeah. as we all know as a muslim we have our time to perform our solar and even in malaysia there are issues about the workers to perform their prayers so maybe in New Zealand you can share about how your colleagues or your boss embrace your differences in terms of our religion. All right. So um, when I first when I first worked there, the first thing that I asked my boss is that, can you is there any place that I can uh, perform my prayers? So that that's the first question I asked him, and because he's always like, the management is always like, um, what can we do for you? 
that's also one thing. They 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 always want to know what they can do for us, so that we can we can perform at our best uh, in in our work. So so I just I just tell them directly that uh, I just uh, requested that uh, do you have any place for me to perform my prayer? So yes, they provide me with a place. I mean, it's just like a small empty office upstairs. So I use that place to pray and and also over here in New Zealand. Um, it's compulsory to have uh, two small breaks in the morning and in the evening. So I have actually three breaks in total. I have a break at 10 a.m. for 10 minutes, and then uh, lunchtime 12 to 12:30, and in the evening is uh, 3 to 3:10 for 10 minutes. So during those times, I I arrange my myself, I arrange my time uh, so that I can perform my prayers during my break time so I don't have to you know do it outside of my break time because they are, they have been very helpful and understanding so I would like to repay yeah the same okay for the next question Mr. Imran was there any rumors or any expectation that you heard beforehand before starting to work in New Zealand right um no, I, I actually haven't heard of any rumors. The only rumors that I that I heard is that, um, I mean, before I came to New Zealand as well, I know that New Zealand is the number one country free from corruption. Mm -hmm. So I would expect that. Um, yeah, I would expect that the working environment would be like very, very good because there's less corruption, like uh, less corruption than all other countries. And it's true. So, yeah, there's no such thing as, um, you know, um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but, um, uh, you know, uh, what's the correct word? Um, kiss ass. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that culture is, uh, there's, there's, there's no, 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 it doesn't happen here. Mm -hmm. So everyone has to work from their way, uh, from has to work their way up. From the, work, from the bottom way up. I think the main yeah. thing for it is Jilat, is it? We always use Jilat in Malaysia. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there, there, there is, there is also like a competition. You know, there, of course, there's competition. You wanna, you wanna get to the top, but there's no such thing as uh, getting to the top in the wrong way or shortcuts. Yeah, that's the word. Sorry. So there's no shortcuts. So everything is fair and square. You work harder. You work smarter. You get it. Go, uh, move on to the next question. Yeah. Okay, right. So um, just now you mentioned something about racism. So this question will be a bit uh, connected to it. So uh, according to a survey carried out by Victoria University Center for Applied Cross-Cultural Research, um, they found a moderate to moderately high level of perceived threat in relation to Muslim immigrants uh, as yourself. So during your time working in New Zealand, are you in any way threatened by any forms of racism such as uh, Islamophobia? Because, you know, we've heard news about the um, the mosque shooting and all that. So are you like maybe in the area or maybe the place you're at uh, is free from all those stuff? All right. So um, before that incident, uh, I have not I have not encountered any um, any cases of, I would say, Islamophobia or racism. Because everyone is very, um, I mean, that's just personally my my own experience. So um, everyone is very friendly. Like I said, New Zealand is a very diverse country. There's like a lot of um, uh, people from many countries uh, who stays here, from you know India, Japan, China. So there's a, there's a lot of cultures here. So everyone respects each other. But in terms of religion, yeah, definitely, you know, Islamophobia is everywhere. That's, that's just how how Islam is portrayed, like in movies and stuff. So, we we cannot do anything about that. So it's just up to the people what they believe. So I would say my experience of Islamophobia is during the Christchurch mosque, uh, mosque attack, uh, which was um, uh, in two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, when you I first heard the news, sorry, you were in New Zealand during that time, right? Yes, I was in New Zealand and. When I first heard the news, I was nowhere near that area. Uh, that was in the South Island, I mean the North Island. Uh, but when I first heard the news, um, I was a bit shocked because um, the video of the shooting like uh, went vi viral. 
yeah, it's very gruesome and uh, frightening. And when I first saw it, me myself as a Muslim, I I feel frightened. At the, the first time ever in New Zealand, I feel threatened for my safety. And I I just um, I was outside and I just went back home. I didn't go out for a few days because uh, that's the best thing to do. You don't, you know, you don't want to uh, provoke or maybe uh, invite any more problems. So you just I just stay home. I would say, but amazingly, amazingly, um, after the shooting, there's like the whole the whole of New Zealand. Everyone is very supportive. They they really hate the person who do it. They hate the act, you know. And whatever happened, they very they very sad as well. And they are with us with Muslims. Um, just I just want to share this. Um, there was this lady in on Facebook. She even offered. I still remember what she said. She she posted and she said, um, uh, to all Muslim uh, sisters out there, if you need help to buy groceries or do you need, uh, if you need someone to accompany you to go buy groceries, to go do anything outside, I'm happy to help. You see that that kind of things uh, when people offer help, they they really really, um, how do I say this? We are one. Yeah, we are one. We are united. So, so it's, yeah. it's just like a small fraction of the community that's Islamophobia. The other part of it is like very helpful to us. Yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say that, yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, Mr. Imran, uh, just to add uh, some question about Islamophobia. Um, for example, some people manage to throw away their serban and remove their facial hair to avoid from being threatened. Do you ever experience this kind of things? Like do you do you shave because you feel like that's a factor? Uh, that yeah. Good question. I actually I actually I actually uh, did that. So after the shooting, because I was keeping my beard, mm-hmm. I, I straight away shave my face, clean shave. Because you know, like I said, I I, I didn't wanna I was uh, I, I feel threatened for my safety. I still need to go out to buy my food and stuff. So, I mean, and my friends uh, who are they are they are Muslim girls, so they wear they wear um, their scarf, their hijab. What they did is also they wear their hoodies and clothes. Clothes put the hoodies uh, on their head so so you can't see the hijab. I mean, it's up to that extent because it's very very scary at that time because you know. Uh, almost 50 people got killed just like that and it was a very uh, terrifying experience but then like I said a few days after everyone was very supportive they, they, they hate the action did by the terrorists and we all came together as one mm-hmm. and helped each other and uh, the most um, I would say very um, heartfelt Touching experience is that um, for the first time ever, the azan was um, uh, publicly um, um, shoot in the TV, in the New Zealand national TV. Yes, yes. Yeah, the next uh, I think just the next weekend on the, on the next Friday prayer, mm-hmm. and uh, our uh, our prime minister, I mean the New Zealand prime minister Jacinda Ardern also was there. And she she's also very supportive, mm-hmm. so that's why I think that even though despite all the um, hate given, you know, shown by the shown by the terrorists, but actually New Zealand is not that's not New Zealand. The terrorist is actually from Australia. So. Oh okay, all right. Okay. 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 Um. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Um. Yeah. So according to a uh, working in New Zealand website. The website states that all migrants that move to New Zealand to work has to go through an online test by the immigration group that focuses specifically on whether you as a skilled migrant are eligible to live and work in New Zealand. Um, did you have to go through any form of online test before you started working? Right. So um, I think that that question applies to those who 
Okay, so just let just let me get it straight. So there are a few pathways for you to work in New Zealand. So like myself, because I came here, uh, I started as a student, international student. So I came here as a, uh, with a student visa. And from there, there is a pathway towards uh, going to mm. work visa. So I, I didn't have to go through the online test. But I would say for those who, who were wanting to work in New Zealand, like not uh, just like right away working in New Zealand without uh, uh, becoming a student or anything. I think they have to go through an online test and maybe one of them would be like an English test, IELTS. That is compulsory. Right. I mean, oh, I actually did IELTS um, to get the student visa. So I, I guess I would say it's almost the same. Uh, everyone who wants to apply a visa here, they, needs to, uh, they, need, they need to uh, um, go through an English test like IELTS. You mentioned, uh, sorry, uh, so we can go to the next question, right? Yeah. Okay, right. Um, you mentioned about student visa and working visa, which is also connected to our next question, actually. Because, I mean, most countries, it's a, it's a handful of, like, paperwork and protocols to get a work visa. Like, um, you have you usually have to come back to your own country, uh, in our case, which is Malaysia, in order to get uh, the working visa. So, as you have mentioned, that you did not come back to Malaysia after, right after you were a student. So how is it? Is it different for New Zealand? How do you manage to change your visa from a student visa to a working visa before coming back to the country before? Right. I think it's the same uh, everywhere else. Uh, there's definitely lots of paperwork because, you know, uh, the government needs to identify who you are. And, I mean, um, they need to know who they're giving their uh, vis visas to. So uh, in, uh, in this case, for New Zealand, in my case, um, so uh, when I finished uh, my studies, like um, last year, like I said, there's a pathway to work visa. So my, my next step was to apply for the post-study work visa. That's the name of my visa. And yeah, I did not have to go back to Malaysia because the process, everything happens here. So there's, there's no need for me to go back to Malaysia. Um, because I, I, I still have a balance of time in my student visa. As long as I'm still, I still have visa here so I don't have to go back, that will be the easiest because once you go back, then when you need to come here back, that's going to be a bit hard. So what, what I only need to do from, from student visa to post-study visa, I just need to update my medical records and also uh, give proof of my completion of studies saying that I, I have already completed my studies in New Zealand and also proof of uh, my financial statement so that they want to know that uh, I can I have sufficient funds to um, for myself so that I can live here live New with, with enough money yeah it's just, just uh, so it's just like that yeah because it's a temporary work visa it's not a resident visa the the hard the hard ones to get is like residency, resident visa, so that, that those ones are a bit harder and definitely more paperwork and are longer you working towards getting that. Are you like trying to get the permanent residence? Yes, at the moment, uh, I'm trying to get the residency visa. So uh, what it's called, it's called skilled migrant category visa. Okay. Yeah, few few questions left. It's like one or two left, right? Uh, can we move on to the next question? Yeah. So okay. Um, since we are in the month of Ramadan, how do you cope working while fasting in New Zealand? Is it different in Malaysia or is it the same? I think the work hours are a bit longer. Is it? Huh. Yeah, definitely different. Um, I believe New Zealand has the shortest fasting time this year. Oh, shortest. Yeah, for now, for now, I think it's like 12 hours, 12 hours, 15, 20 minutes, something like that in total. Is it? Yeah, because uh, now we're, we're changing from summer to autumn. So the, the day is getting shorter. The daytime, daylight time is getting shorter and the night is getting longer. So that's why we fast uh, in shorter time. So, and... 
fasting in New Zealand, yeah, since it's shorter, so it's not as as bad, you know. And also with the weather here, it's not hot. Uh, summer has ended; it's autumn now, and it's uh, starting to get cold again. So you know, you you don't get thirsty or or hungry that much. And since I'm working in the office, I don't I don't um, do any um, physical work. Yeah, no, no, not not too many physical work. So it's 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 very very bearable, and very good. So, yeah, definitely different. Have you ever experienced fasting in the winter? Because I feel like if it's winter, it's a bit harder to fast. I, I know I've heard things about that. Right. Um. I yes, I did. Um. Last year was during winter. Mm. Sorry, last year and last two years was during winter. Um, I would say the on the only hard part is that uh during winter, um, uh, it's dry. It's not hot, but it's dry. Mm-hmm. The air is dry. It's not moist. You get so when it's dry, you you get very dry throat. It's different, like a dry because of heat. This is dry because of too cold. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I would say that's the only um, challenge there, and also yeah, it's cold. But other than that, it's all right. All right, good to know. Okay, right. Uh, so we've come to our um, last and final question. We're all ending the interview already. So the final question would be: um, As a person who's been working in New Zealand for almost a year, and you've been in New Zealand for quite some time already, for a few years, uh, what's your advice to the individuals that um, would like to work in New Zealand? Is there anything you know they should they should be prepared for or something that should they shouldn't do? Right. Um, okay. Interesting question. So for now, um, New Zealand has closed its borders to everyone, yes, except Australia. And I would say it's uh it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to get any any visa at all to enter New Zealand because it's very hard right now. Mm-hmm. They closed their borders because you know um as a uh, COVID nineteen uh. Uh, safety measures. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, the immigration New Zealand is not processing any offshore applications right now. Even even for those who already have their visas, they can't enter New Zealand. So I would say for now it's uh, it doesn't look very promising. But um, but if the uh, if one day the border opens again, um, I would say. So I will just say what 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 used to happen before before COVID nineteen, all right? Because I I, I would never know what what the uh, uh, government is gonna do when everything settles down and stuff. So, uh, but before this, there's like many 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 um, types of visa that you can apply to work here, and one of the easiest one I would say is uh, it's what it's called. Um, so if we're from Malaysia, it's called Malaysia Work Holiday Visa. And you usually get that for one to two years, and you can just come here and work, and just work whatever work you want. I'm not too sure about the requirements because I've never I've never really looked into it, but I think it's it's pretty easy. But uh, different um, for different types of visa, so there's a different requirements. So there's like uh, talent accre- uh, accre- accredited visa. There's um, a long uh, sorry, shortage skills visa, and then the temporary work visa, and then the post study work visa, like I'm having right now. If you just finish your studies, and then what else? Yeah, and yes, you can, you can, you can work here. And I would say, if you really want to work in New Zealand, you need to have, you need to be able to uh, work in the. Um, uh, list of skills that is in high demand in New Zealand. Uh, for example, uh, right now, like right now, uh, of course, it's uh, like uh, healthcare workers. But other than that, there's, there's plenty more. It's like um, in engineering and um, what else? Arts. So everything, all that information, you can just uh, go online and search in uh, Immigration New Zealand, everything is 
everything is in the website. You can just find out uh, what do you need to know, what you have to do, what you must have, what you must do, so that you can get a visa. Well, that was all before, before COVID. Yeah. Right now, I would say it's highly unlikely you, you can enter New Zealand. All right. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So that's the last and final question for our interview session today. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mr. Imran, for agreeing to conduct this interview session with us. Um, for uh, everyone's information also, Mr. Imran is also an ex-student of KPM in Ramakota, which was also a DEC student like us. Okay, right. So once again, thank you, Mr. Imran, for uh, the interview session thank today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. All right, you're most welcome. We hope you are taking care in New Zealand. We hope you are ease for every of your work uh, in New Zealand on that. Okay, right. That'll be all from us. Thank you. Salam. Thank you. Salam.